Hi everyone, this is Mrs. V Chen. Welcome to my Form 4 Accounting Lesson Number 23. Today is 16th of July 2020. Okay, so we will look at inventory valuation again in today's lesson. And then I'm going to go through the past exam question in 2008 with you today. Okay, so here is the question in 2018. And then we will look at Question 3B first, and let's look at the things we have to do. Here we have to prepare a statement to calculate the closing stock value. So the updated name for stock is inventory. So I'm going to change the name to statement showing the closing inventory value as at 31st December 2007. Okay, so therefore I have my statement here. We always start with a nice heading and this is a statement showing the closing inventory as at 31st December 2007. All right, so this is the figure given to us to begin with. And then the final answer will be the value of inventory as at the financial year ends on 31st December 2007. All right, so let's look at the first paragraph in part B here which is due to unexpected circumstances. The year-end physical stock taking of Mr. Wong's business was delayed from 31st December 2007 to 6th January 2008. Okay, so therefore we are given this figure 38,420 was on 6th of January instead of 31st December. So something very, very important in this question Okay, so let me show you here we have the diagram and which is also the timeline. So that this is financial year end, okay, which is on 31st December, and then we need to work out the closing inventory, and this is unknown. And let me put X here for the closing inventory. Okay, however, the figure given to, to us by physical stock taking, which is after the financial year end, so that we are given this figure 38,420. All right, so before we look at the calculation, all right, so let us record all the things that may happen in between these six days. Okay, so if we start from X here, so we may have sales during this period, is that right? So what happened after sales? After sales, we have less inventory. So I, if I start from X and then I minus sales, Okay, and then we may have what? We may have purchases in between these periods and after purchases, we have more inventory, so plus purchases, right? And then the opposite to purchases, we have returns outwards. So what happened after return outwards? We may have less inventory, so I put minus here. And then the things opposite to sales is returns inwards from the customer. So what happened after return inward? So we may have more inventory, so plus here. So therefore, if we start with X here, so X minus sales plus purchases minus returns outwards plus return inwards is same as this figure. Okay, so however, this is very, very important since we don't start with the figure here, we start with this figure. So if we change subject to find the unknown, which is closing inventory X, and then we move cells to the right hand side and then all this sign here must be opposite for example if we start from this figure we have to plus sales minus purchases plus return outwards and minus returns inwards so this is very very opposite otherwise all the answer answers in this question will be wrong and this is also exactly the opposite to the previous question in lesson number 22 Okay, and next, one more thing is very important as well before we look at the question, which is about the value of inventory should be recorded at costs. However, sales is recorded at selling price, so later on we need to convert this selling price back to costs. And then purchases already recorded at costs and return hours also recorded at cost, so we don't need to do anything. And also return inwards, which is recorded at selling price, under the normal situation so later on we need to convert this back to costs as well okay now we can look at this point number one here saying that after the physical accounts an item of 100 was found to be 
worthless. So this is very bad news to our business. So we have to minus 100 from the value of the inventory. Okay, why become, why become worthless? Because it was damaged in a warehouse. So here, the dates for physical stock counts was on 1st January. So within this figure, 38,420, we have inventory being damaged. So that we have to minus this inventory being worthless. Okay, so this is related to point one. And how much is that? Point number one. Okay, which is 100 to minus 100 from the value of inventory here. Okay, and this is from point number one. Okay, now we come to point two. We are given this. The purchases and sales during this period amounted to 7,230 and 6,880. All right, so what happened after purchases? In the normal situation, if we start from X here, we will have more inventory after purchases. We plus purchases. But since we don't start with X here, X is the subject, we start with this figure, right? So we have to change the sign, minus purchases instead. So therefore, in my statements, this is my statement, I have to minus purchases instead of plus. Okay, this is related to point two. Purchases is already recorded at cost, so I simply minus 7230, for purchases. Okay, and next, I have sales here. So under normal situation, after sales, we have less inventory. So we have to minus sales, right? But here we need to do the opposite because by changing subject to X, so that I have to plus sales. So add sales related to point two. Since sales is a selling price, okay, so 6880, so 6880. So I need to convert that back to costs. And here in this question, we are given a markup of 25%. So therefore, how do we convert that divided by 1.25? Okay, so here is my calculator to work out that 6,080 divided by 1.25. Okay, so therefore I have 5,504. Okay, so the same points after that during this period, goods at invoice price were returned by customer so what is it return by customer means this is returns inwards at invoice price so this is at selling price okay so under the normal situation after return inwards so we have more inventory so we should plus but now we need to do the opposite so i need to minus this so goods returned by customer less okay so goods return by customer okay point two all right and this one should be recorded at selling price so sorry this is 5900 is at selling price i need to change that back to cost of 5900 so 5900 divided by 1.25 to back to change that back to cost so uh, that's uh, 5,900 divided by 1.25 so that I have 4,720 okay so and after that there were no return outward so that's all about point number two okay now we come to point number three goods costing 530 was drawn by Mr. Wong on 4th January for his personal use Okay, so what happened? Who is Mr. Wong? Mr. Wong is the owner. So whenever we have owner, okay, takes away inventory. So what is the treatment to that? We call that drawing. So this is a special thing here. So we have drawings. Okay, so let's look at the timeline here. We have something special. So what happened after drawings, after owners taken taking away inventory so we have less inventory because of drawings all right i have to minus so since we need to change subject x is the subject so for this minus 
we we'll change that. We will need to change that to plus. Okay. Okay. So in my statement here, I need to add back drawings, which is good taken away by the owner. So which is three hundred fifty already at costs, and this is point number three. So three hundred fifty. Okay. So next. We have another sentence here in point number three. In addition, goods were sold on fifth of January to company staff for two thousand, as being fifty percent of the normal selling price. Okay, so what happened? This is also sales. What happened after sales? After sales, we should have less inventory, right? So the more normal situation, we have to minus. However, since we changed the subject to X, so Minus becomes plus. We do the opposite. So here I have to add back. This is the sales made to made to staff. Okay, all right, and which is point number three. Okay, so we need to do some calculation related to that. Okay. So we need to change that back to costs, so that I write this equation. So costs. How do we work out normal selling price times one point two five? So this is normal selling price. Okay. So since this is good selling to the staff, okay, and according to situation here, being fifty percent of the normal selling price, so we only. Charge staff fifty percent of the norm, normal selling price, and the special price of offering to the staff is two thousand. Okay, so here is my equation. All right, so we start from the normal costs, add markup, and then give fifty percent equals to two thousand. So if you set this equation, then it will be easier for us to work out the costs. So I change subject to costs. So therefore, I have to start with this two thousand divided by fifty percent, and then divided by one point two five. So this is my step. Okay, that I need to use for the calculation here. Sales made to staff. So how much is the cost? Okay, I copy the step here. So that will be two thousand divided by fifty percent divided by one point. Two five. So while you have this step, if you set equation in this way, and then you can work out it easier in this situation. All right. So now I can use my calculator to work out the costs in this situation. Two thousand divided by zero point five. Okay. Then divided by one point two five, so that I have this change back to. Costs related to point number three. We have special sales made to staff of the business. Okay, so in point number three here, even though we have this word saying that both events had not been recorded in the books, so we don't need to worry about because how do we get the closing inventory value? We just do it by fiscal stock taking. It doesn't matter it is recorded or not recorded. Okay, so that's all for point number three. And finally, the last point, point number four, goods costing seven hundred twenty were sent to a customer for inspection. So I need my diagram. Okay, so that means if we start from closing inventory here, and we start with X, and now we have goods sent to customer for inspection. So what happened after we sent? Goods for inspection to customer, we may have less inventory. So since we change subject to X, so and this is the figure given to us, so that for the sign here minus, we have to do opposite. So therefore, we have to add this goods sent for inspection instead of minus. Okay, so add goods sent for inspection to customer for. Inspection and this is point number four. Okay, so how much is it? Which is seven hundred twenty. So this is already recorded at cost. So I just put seven hundred twenty. Okay, 
All right, and then you can see that the customer confirmed his acceptance for the goods on 8th January, which is already beyond this period. So we don't need to do anything about that. Okay, just look at the effects of goods sent to customer. So after we send goods to customer, we minus, but since we need to change the sign so that we change this to S to this figure instead of minus. Okay, so yes, and now I can calculate how much is the final answer. Okay, okay, so finally just use calculator to add up all the figures here and then to minus. 12,050 and then we get the closing inventory as at 31st December 2007 which is the financial year end we have closing inventory equals to 36,144 okay so here is the timeline again we start from we start from closing inventory we don't know okay we have two new figures here new things here which are drawings all right and good sense to customer for inspection so we have these two things new in this question okay so after we finished point b here we go back to point a here we have main limited specializes in trading of antique furniture trading means buying selling buying selling so therefore this antique furniture will be a kind of inventory to main limited all right. So in view of the increasing popularity of antique furniture, the suppliers increases their selling price by 10%. And then accordingly, main limited values or is closing inventory at 10% above its purchase cost. So this sentence is absolutely wrong because all inventory not yet sold to the customer should be recorded at costs according to prudence concepts we should not mark up the value of inventory. Okay, however, this 5% of inventory is damaged and has a sellable value, which is lower than cost, so that we need adjustments for this damaged inventory. Okay, so here is my diagram. So we have all the inventory, so all inventory should be recorded at purchase cost. But so what happened to this 5%? percent damaged inventory so under this situation we must lower our selling price so therefore the costs will be bigger than the net realizable value and then we always choose a lower one so that for this five percent damaged inventory we choose net realizable value you can refer to the previous video okay to look at the definition of net realizable value all right and what about the the remaining 95 percent not damaged so very often we have this cost which will be smaller than the selling price so which is net realizable value and then we always choose a no lower one so which one is lower so cost is lower so in this situation we just put this 90 percent of the inventory which is not damaged recorded at costs okay all right so therefore this is the answer to point a okay so which accounting concept being violated which is the prudence concept all right has been violated and what is the definition for prudence concept saying that not to overstate the good things of the business not to overstate net profits we shouldn't overstate that and also we should not overstate the value of assets should not be overstated and also we should not understate the value of the bad things for example the losses should not be understated and all the liabilities should not be understated so this is the um, definition of prudence concept therefore we always compare costs with the net realizable value and then we always choose a lower one okay so therefore the answer to this five percent damaged since net realizable is lower so should be recorded at net should be recorded at the lower one which is net realizable value and for the 95 percent normal one okay we should record this not damaged inventory at costs okay so that's all about the question in 2008 so thank you for watching my video I see you next time. Bye-bye.